chapter 6 verses 9 to 10 it says here and let us not grow weary of doing good for in due season we will reap if we do not give up so then as we have opportunity let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of the house of faith i know a lot of us here we are tired alam ko maraming pagod na dito and a lot of us are asking god bakit ganun i keep doing good bakit ako pa rin yung napapahama Bakit yung mga kasama ko nakikita ko sinungaling? Those who are corrupt around us, why do we see them gaining power? Why do we see them rising up? And kami na gumagawa ng tama, 
kami pa'y napapahama, kami nakakawawa. And let me tell you that God never turns a blind eye to justice. A lot of us here see the injustices around us and we feel like we are frozen, we can't do anything. And some of us are about to give up doing good. But I want to remind you right now not to give up because God is the ultimate judge of everything. God sees everything. God sees the pain inside of your heart. Yung mga iniiyak mo kay Lord, yung mga feeling mo wala nakakakita sa ginagawa mo, God can see you. God sees everything that you do and God sees everything that we all do. So if you're here today and you are feeling tired, you are just about to give up. You are just about to lose hope because you feel like there is no justice in this world. Let me tell you that there is justice in God's time. So can we just pray, Lord, you see your people here. Nakikita mo, God, yung mga tao dito na nakakaramdam, Lord, ng pagod. Malapit na sumuko. There are those of us here who are thinking, Lord, na ngayon lang naman. Ngayon ko lang naman gagawin to. Wala naman makakakita. But Lord, remind us, God, today, through your word, Lord, that you see everything. You see the aches and pains inside of us. You see the cry of our hearts, Lord. You see the injustices around us. You see the injustices that have happened to us, oh God. Those of us here, Lord, who have been mistreated unfairly, God, I know, Lord, that you see that. You see their aches and pains, Lord, and I just want to pray healing over their lives, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray healing over those lives. Those who have been treated unfairly, those who have experienced injustices in their lives, God, I want to pray healing for them right now, God. And Lord, restore us. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us, God, that you see everything. And in due time, Lord, everything will be okay. It always gets better. So we thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you for your word, Lord. Help us, God. Help us just enjoy worshiping you today, Lord, knowing that everything is in your hands. Knowing that whatever happens, Lord, you are in control. So we thank you, God. We just let go today, Lord. And we leave it all up to you. We lift up our hands to you. We worship you, God. We worship you in Jesus' name.
for good. That's your power, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Come on, church, we declare.
We depend on you. In your name. In your most powerful name.
verse 13 to 14. It says there, Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. Jesus will do it. There is power in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, all of us, we're all praying for something. I mean, even if you're not a religious person, I'm sure you've prayed once in your life or you're believing for something, dreaming for something, or even hoping for something. And I sense that one of those things, maybe someone here, you're praying for healing. That might be mental healing. Maybe you're praying for, for your mental health, something that you've been struggling with all your life. Something that has kept you up all night because of all these dark negative thoughts crowding your mind that keeps you from getting rest, keeps you from getting sleep. Some of you, maybe you're praying for physical healing. Maybe you've been injured and that injury has not has not left your your body up to this day. Maybe maybe you're you're you're, you're sick. Maybe there's a disease or an illness that you're struggling with. And you're praying healing for that. Maybe it's relational healing for some of you. That there's a there's a loved one that you just can't seem to uh, restore that relationship with. Or maybe you're praying for your parents or for someone's relationship to just be restored. And some of you, maybe it's it's spiritual healing. Maybe you're far off from God. Maybe you're dried from God, and you just feel like you're you're distant and you're.
right, welcome everyone to our 11 a.m. Well, 11 a.m. service pa lang. But soon, we will have, kasi mukhang tumadami na tayo talaga. So soon, we'll have a lot of services in the future. So, welcome everyone to Victory. Here at Victory, we like doing two things, and that's to honor God and to make disciples. I'd just like to see a show of hands sa mga first-timers dito. Meron ba tayong mga first-time dito? Please don't be shy. We just want to see you. Raise your hands. Keep your hands raised. Yeah, keep your hands raised. If it's your first time, please keep your hands raised. And our ushers will come to you. Meron silang maliit na token lang. They'll give you something. Just, just a little welcome for you guys. And uh, we want to welcome you all. Uh, here in Victory, we believe so much. service please just stick around you know you can uh, you can mingle and connect with us after the service okay uh, we we believe na church or uh, our worship service does not end mismo uh, after the preaching but even after the preaching uh, we we want to be able to connect with you we want to be able to to um, to meet you yeah, and so that we can continue to walk with Jesus together so that being said uh, let me uh, just announce a couple of things here. Uh, we are going to be having Victory Weekend on March 23 to 24. Yan, palakpaka naman natin si Lord. Kasi may Victory Weekend na naman. So, um, if you are done with one-to-one, -one, okay, sa mga iba, hindi kayo familiar sa one-to-one, -one, you, can, you can approach our ushers. They'll, they'll let, let you know a little bit more about what that is. Uh, you can approach our leaders, any of our volunteers. Okay, and uh, just a quick uh, a quick summary about one to one. It's actually just it's a it's a tool that we use in order to help start you up with your discipleship uh, journey and your walk with God. 
And after you're done with one to one, uh, we have this uh, two day retreat. You know, Victory Weekend, is it time to deepen our relationship with God and focus on establishing the spiritual foundations necessary for a lifelong walk with Him? So, marami rin tayong matututunan dito. It includes time of worship. Meron tayong Bible teaching doon. And there's going to be some prayer time and even some personal ministry that will ensure that we understand and walk in the freedom Christ won for us at the cross. So, if you're done with one-to-one, -one, uh, this is for you. This is the next step. This will help and guide you uh, with your walk with God, with your walk with Jesus. I personally uh, really appreciate this uh, this event and this through this event. And of course, si Jesus lang naman ang nagbago talaga sa akin. But this this event and with our help, the help of our leaders, I was able to uh, to understand more kung anong ginawa ni Lord para sa akin talaga and what that grace of Jesus entails. So uh, if you'd love. Uh, if you'd like to encounter and experience God uh, on the next level, in a next level, uh, I, I suggest if you're done with one-to-one, -one, reach out to us for Victory Weekend. So that's March 23 and 24. And um, the venue is to be Upgrace Inn. In Upgrace Inn. Kela Miss Gwen. Thank you, Miss Gwen. Um, that will be March 23 and 24. And uh, for our next announcement, we just want to uh, give you an update on our Every Nation, uh, Every Nation Church in Panama. So for those of you who don't know, Victory is part of a global movement called Every Nation. And it's not just here in the Philippines, but we have churches around the globe also. Because God called us to make disciples of every nation. Okay? That's the great commission that Jesus gave his disciples. And that's what we are doing. You know, we're, we're planting churches in every nation. And one of those nations is Panama. And uh, let's see what God is doing faithfully in and through our church there. It is a privilege to witness how God continually grows the seeds that we have planted and watered. And as a church, we remain committed to partnering with God in doing His work in the nations. Let's hear this story from Every Nation Panama. Hello everyone, my name is Rico Rico Ford. I'm a church planter here in Every Nation Panama. Panama is one of the seven Central American nations and is known for the Panama Canal. We believe that this is a strategic country because just like the canal, it serves as a gateway to the rest of Central America, South America, and the rest of the world. We're just so excited because this year, the Lord has opened up two other campuses, making it four campuses that we are reaching out to. We believe that these are strategic campuses because a lot of international students are here right now. We were able to reach a young student in the University of Panama. Hola, mi nombre es Steve. Soy estudiante de la Universidad de Panamá y soy miembro de la Iglesia Every Nation Panamá. Los miembros de Every Nation, yo estando en la grada y ellos estando compartiendo el, el Evangelio en su servicio. Y ese mismo, cuando al finalizar ellos terminaron, ellos se presentaron a mí y, y ahí empezó la relación con ellos. Luego eh, empecé a compartir con ellos y ellos empezaron a compartir el uno a uno conmigo y ahí fui creciendo. Eh, al pri eh, principio tenía miedo de compartir el one to one, porque, pero Dios me dio ese amor de ir y querer compartirlo a mi amigo y conectarme más con los estudiantes y de tener más un gran valor que me ha dado Dios para compartir el evangelio. Me ha ayudado a fortalecer mi fe, me ha ayudado a que yo también tenga ese deseo de hacer otros eh, uno a uno con otros estudiantes. Mi visión para esta nación es que nosotros reflejemos el amor de Jesucristo y de su carácter los unos a los otros y así para reflejar lo misericordioso que es Dios a, a los perdidos. We're so excited for the future here in Panama because we believe as we reach out that the Lord will open doors. God is going to use these students to be future missionaries in the rest of Central America and Latin America. So please continue to pray with us as we reach out, as we raise more student leaders. Thank you for all your support, for all your prayers, for all your love. God bless you. Truly, we can never limit God and His greatness.
May these stories serve as an encouragement for us to continue trusting that God has far greater plans for us and His church. Thank you for faithfully participating in God's work. There is nothing that can ever stop His glory and power from being revealed to every nation. Let's give God a round of applause. And God is good, no? Um, I just want to echo what Pastor Rico said, that uh, we, we really thank you for your generous support and prayers for, for reaching to the nations. Um, uh, your, your prayers and your support it goes a long way, and uh, I just want to encourage you that yung every nation pa naman, no, hindi lang sila lang yon, hindi lang um, Metro Manila yon, but uh, even Palawan, as we give and as we pray and support, it, it, it is part of our family. Every nation Panama is, this is, uh, lahat tayo ito, kumbaga. Every nation Panama is, is part of our global family. So, um, uh, I'd like to encourage you, continue to pray and uh, continue to support and, uh, and just know that God is pleased whenever, whenever you do so. So, uh, thank you, thank you so much for your heart and for your prayers for every nation Panama and all the nations uh, that we are reaching out to. So God is transforming lives left and right, um, and, it, and, it, and we'll, we'll continue to see updates like these as we continue to believe the gospel spread around the world. So that being said, let's uh, continue to uh, uh, remain in an attitude of worship as we listen to the preaching of the word. We are continuing on our series called Faith Like No Other. And in the series, we're actually talking about uh, believing in God. Uh, in Tagalog, pinag-uusapan natin yung pananampalataya natin sa Panginoon. Pero hindi lang pananampalataya, kundi yung pagtitiwala din natin sa ating Panginoon. We're talking about how we could believe in God and how we could trust in Him even more in our lives. So for our series uh, description, this is the... Uh, description to our Faith Like No Other series. We are doing this series because we desire to see a generation with a different kind of faith. One that is radical and one that endures despite it all. And we know naman in life, nothing is easy. Faith is also not easy, but we hope that through this series we'll be able to develop a radical kind of faith, an audacious and tenacious kind of faith that no matter what we're going through in our lives, we will still continue to press on because God has so much in store for His people. Our prayer for this series is for us to have a deeper understanding of God's power and His faithfulness as attributes that are cut above the rest just still connected to our set apart theme for the year. The one of God's really attributes that are cut above the rest is that He is so powerful and He is so faithful in His essence. And hopefully as we know that and experience that, it would lead us to greater trust, greater obedience, and greater worship of Him. So this preaching series aspires to strengthen our faith, to trust God in the impossible, and live a life of faith before God that is shared also with others. Could you just look at the person beside you? Just say good morning and ask that person, do you still believe that God can do the impossible in your life? Okay. And when we're talking about the impossible or maybe we're, when we're talking about faith, a lot of times when we you know, talk about this word faith, ito yung naiisip natin. When there's a dead end, when there's things that we cannot explain or we cannot prove, ah, faith na lang yan. Diba? Let's just uh, respond in faith, diba? May mga ganun tayong comments, may mga ganun tayong pag-iisip. And a lot of times, we feel like, you know, faith is actually parang a blind kind of faith. Pero yung faith natin sa Panginoon, hindi ganun. Actually, our faith is based on truth. And what is the truth? I remember in Hebrews 11 verse 1, uh, this is the description of faith. Faith is the assurance. Can you say the word assurance? 
assurance of things hoped for, and it's the conviction of things not seen. When we talk about our faith, it's not just a blind kind of faith. Our faith is actually based on truth. And the truth is God's character and God's word. Yun yung basihan natin ng ating faith. That's why we could believe even for the impossible. We could believe even if logic you know, doesn't agree with our situation, we can still believe because this is not just a hyper kind of faith or a blind kind of faith, but it is a ba- faith that is rooted and based on God's character in, and His word. And when you talk about God's character in His word, we're talking about His track record. That's why our faith is based on history. His story. That's why in this series, we're talking about God's story in the different men and women in the Bible who exhibit, you know, tremendous uh, level of faith or even we can call their faith as a crazy kind of faith. That's why in this series, Faith Like No Other, we're, we're, we'll talk about Noah and the flood. We'll talk about today, Jonathan and his armor bearer. And then next week, we'll talk about the prophet Elijah and the 7,000 other prophets. And then we'll end the series by talking about Esther and the plot against the Jews, okay? So today, we'll be talking about the story of Jonathan and his armor bearer. And as we uh, get ready, you know, ready our hearts, ready our spirit, as we talk about our word for today, can I invite you to stand in reverence and honor of the word of God. So I know when we go to church, yung isip natin, saan-saan lumilipad, no? When we go here, but I would like to take this moment for us to focus on the Word of God. Let's just go to the reading of His Word. We will read the Word of the Lord in its purest form. So in verse 1, One day Jonathan, the son of Saul, said to the young man who carried his armor, Come, let us go over to the Philistine garrison on the other side. But he did not tell his father. Saul was staying in the outskirts of Gibeah in the pomegranate cave at Migron. The people who were with him were about 600 men including Ahijah, the son of Ahitub, Ichabod's brother, son of Phinehas, son of Eli, the priest of the Lord in Shiloh, wearing an ephod. And the people did not know that Jonathan had gone. In verse 4, within the passes by which Jonathan sought to go over to the Philistine garrison, there was a rocky crag on the side, on, on the one side and a rocky crag on the other side. The name of the one was Bozes and the name of the other, Sene. Verse 5, the one crag rose on the north in front of Michmash and on the other on the south in front of Geba. Jonathan said to the young man who carried his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of the uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing can hinder the Lord from saving by many or by few. Verse 7, and his armor bearer said to him, Do all that is in your heart. Do as you wish. Behold, I am with you heart and soul. Then Jonathan said, Behold, we will cross over to the men and we will show ourselves to them. If they say to us, Wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and we will not go up to them. But if they say, Come up to us, then we will go up for the Lord has given them into our hand and this shall be the sign to us. So both of them showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines and the Philistines said, Look, Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they have hidden themselves. And the men of the garrison hailed Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us and we will show you a thing. And Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. Verse 13, Then Jonathan climbed up on his hands and feet and his armor bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer killed them after him. And that first strike which Jonathan and his armor bearer made killed about 20 men within as it were half a furrow's length in an acre of land. And lastly, verse 15, And there was a panic in the camp, in the field, and among all the people. The garrison, even the raiders trembled, the earthquake, and it became a very great panic. That is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. God, thank you that you have a mighty work. Lord God, that you are doing in our lives. And thank you, God, that you are, you are continually bringing that mighty work, Lord, in our lives through the preaching and the study of your word. 
So I pray, God, that the word that we're going to receive, let it be planted in our hearts, and I pray that it would bear fruit that will last. God, I pray that you would level up our faith this morning. I pray that you would stir up the hearts of your people. I pray, God, that we will see how big, how awesome you are, God, that you are greater than all of our situations, than all of our problems, than all of our sufferings, than all of our pain. I pray that you will be magnified in the preaching of your word, God, this morning. Lord, Holy Spirit, minister to us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may now all take our seats. So our text for today is the story of Jonathan. Jonathan is the son of King Saul. King Saul was the very first king of Israel, and uh, Jonathan is uh, a young man during this time. He was a young man, a young warrior, and this passage of scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 14 talks about the remarkable fate of Jonathan. So the context of the story, let's just talk about the setting so we might appreciate the text even more. So Israel stands now under the shadow of the Philistine army with fear gripping their hearts. And now Saul, the king, the one who should be leading the Israelites, he was the very first one who was paralyzed because of his fear over the Philistine army. And of course, he had so many insecurities. If you know the story of King Saul, he started very well as a king. But you know, as time progresses, he regressed. Okay, his character, his behavior, his relationship with God, his obedience with God, it regressed. That's why his leadership also regressed. And yung, yung, yung takot niya over the situation, it paralyzed him that uh, really disabled him to lead the Israelites. But uh, good thing, there is Jonathan and his armor bearer. And we'll talk about today their powerful testimony or a powerful testament to the power of faith, showing us that even in the moments of doubt and fear, the trusting in God alone can lead to victory. So, ano nga ba yung nangyari in this story? So, if you go to 1 Samuel chapter 13, uh, itong mga Israelites, they just attacked, you know, one of the troops of the Philistine at Geba. And as a result of that, so, they were carrying 3,000 soldiers during that time. Okay, 2,000 soldiers of Saul and 1,000 soldiers of, uh, of Jonathan. So they attacked one of the, the garrisons, one of the troop of, Philist, uh, of the Philistines. And because of what they did, nagretaliate ito mga Philistines. So they sent out 30,000 troops, okay? 30,000 people with 6,000 chariots, 6,000 horsemen outnumbering the people of God. So we can read that story in 1 Samuel chapter 13. And because, you know, nag-aangas-angas ng mga Israelites, no? Akala nila, di ba, yung great victory na, yung na-experience nila in one of the in one of the garrisons of the Philistine, no, gulat sila nung nagpadala yung mga Philistines ng 3,000, you know, people. And they were just 3,000 during the time and it overwhelmed them. A lot of the, the soldiers, a lot of the people of the Israelites went into hiding that when we look at the text from 3,000, ang natira nilang 600 Israelites. And I want us to understand also during this time, the Philistine army war was really... Uh, extending their influence and their reign over the Israelites. And one of the things that they, they, uh, they did during the time, walang blacksmith. So there's no one who could forge swords and weapons for the Israelites. When we look at scripture, it's only Saul and, uh, and Jonathan who has, you know, a, a weapon. So makikita natin, it was a military, economic, and political failure, and Israel was grossly disadvantaged. So this is the tension in what we're reading right now in our text. How do we respond when our situation is against all odds? Have you ever experienced that? Na parang yung situation mo, it's really against all odds. Your backs are against the ropes. Feeling mo wala nang pupuntahan tong situation mo. Parang hindi ka na makakaahon sa kinalulubugan mo. So what do we do when we are faced with the impossible? So we will look at Jonathan, enter this young man filled with courage and faith with God, and he sees the fear and despair surrounding the entire nation of Israel. But instead of following the pattern and succumbing to the fear, you know, to the worries, to the doubts, 
and also of people going into hiding during that time, he responded in a different way. He chose to act and fight the enemy together with his armor bearer. So this morning, we will look at the faith of Jonathan and his armor bearer in God's power and, it, and in God's promise. We will look at their confidence to go and fight anyway to lead Israel to victory, and then we can glean on some lessons that we can learn from Jonathan and his armor bearer. So let's look at how we can overcome uh, our fear and how we can overcome our doubts. So number one lesson that we can learn from Jonathan and his armor bearer is that we can overcome fear through faith. Can we read that all together? We can overcome fear through faith. Faith. So how do we do that? I know it's easy to read. It's easy to say. But when we look at our situation, how can we really overcome this fear that I am experiencing or the worry that I am carrying right now? So even in the face of overwhelming ads, we can learn from Jonathan and his armor bearer that we can still choose to trust God's power and wisdom. So let's look at 1 Samuel 14 verse 1. So on the day, Jonathan, the son of Saul, said to the young man who carried his armor, he's talking about the armor bearer. By the way, David was also an armor bearer of King Saul at one time. So an armor bearer, hindi lang yan, ano, parang assistant mo. Uh, an armor bearer is a trained, skilled warrior who is very loyal to the king or to the prince, which in fact, in this story, ang prince ay si, si Jonathan, okay? So he said to the young man who carried his armor, come let us go over to the Philistine garrison on the other side. But he did not tell his father. Because nakikita na niya yung nangyari. Lahat nagkakagulo. Siguro si Saul tulala na. Yung he was just paralyzed of his fear. Hindi mo na makausap. Nakanganga na lang. You know, have you ever experienced that? Yung parang ayaw mo na lang lumabas sa bahay. Parang nagmumukbo ka na lang sa kwarto mo. Ayaw mo nang maligo. Ayaw mo nang mag on sa life mo. And you know, sometimes life hits us hard that our response is paralysis, like King, King Saul. Pero si Jonathan, he responded in a different way. He said, let's go over to the Philistine garrison. You know, that was a very bold statement, knowing that they were facing 30,000 men. When we look at in verse 2, makikita natin, the people who just stayed from 3,000, it was just 600 men. And how can you win against 30,000 soldiers with 6,000 chariots at ikaw ang, ang armas nyo lang, sumpit siguro. Dura-dura lang, di ba? Or amba-amba lang, or fist fight. How can you win that battle when you are outnumbered and at the same time, you are outweaponed? Okay? On verse 3, makita natin dito, hindi alam ng mga tao na umalis na si Jonathan sa kay armor bearer. So, atapang atahaw talaga to. No? Uh, uh, aputo la kamay, hindi atakbo. No? <laughs> aputo la daliri, hindi atakbo. Apatak akalaman si, atakbo atulin. Pero hindi tumakbo si, si atawag amisis, atakbo atulin. No? Yung iba. Okay, pero si Jonathan, iba, no? Di niya pinaalam. Kasi alam niya, kapag pinaalam niya, madidiscourage lang siya. Have you ever experienced that? When you talk to people, instead of building you up, Dini discourage ka pa. Ha? Wala, wala mangyayari diyan. Subuko ka na lang. Naku, kung ako sa iyo, ano ka na lang? Give up ka na lang diyan. Mag-backslide ka na lang. Ganda nung sinasabi ni Migi kanina. I believe that's the word of the Lord. A lot of us maybe we feel like we want to give up doing good. Eh parang wala namang nangyayari kung gumagawa ako ng tama, eh, gumagawa ako ng tama, parang ako pa na agrabyado. Lahat umaasenso na ako, stuck pa rin dito. Hindi nga lang stuck, lumulubog pa lalo. So maybe you you are you are experiencing like that, no? Pero si si Jonathan, alam niya, ganun yung environment niya, pero it didn't hinder him, no, from believing in God and acting in faith. So sabi ni Jonathan, jumping to verse 6, sabi niya sa sa armor bearer, "Come, let us go over to the garrison of this uncircumcised. Sabi niya, punta tayo doon, kahit 30,000 sila, walang sinabi yung mga yun. Mga uncircumcised naman yung mga yun. Sabi niya. So, sabi niya, let's go over there. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing can hinder the Lord from saving by many or by few. Tanungin lang natin, when we go to scripture, it's very good to observe and ask question. Ano kaya yung hugot ni Jonathan? Bakit ang tapang niya? Tingin nyo, ba't ang tapang ni Jonathan dito? 
Imagine 30,000 people, dalawa lang sila ng armor bearer niya. Why do you think Jonathan is so, is so courageous, is so bold? Could it be that the last name of Jonathan is Wick? Jonathan Wick? John Wick? Tapos yung armor bearer niya, yung bulldog niya. Could it be it's John Wick, you know, in this story? But it's not John Wick in this story, it's Jonathan, King of Saul. You know, when we, I believe this is one of the reasons that we can go, as we go dig deeper in Scripture, why Jonathan is so courageous in his faith. Because when the Lord raised up Samuel as the king of Israel, actually may promise palang binigay ang Panginoon through the prophet Samuel. So when God raised up King Saul as a king, the Lord said, that was revealed to the prophet Samuel, tomorrow about this time, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. And that is where King Saul and Jonathan came from. And you shall anoint him to be the prince over my people Israel. And what's the promise? He shall save my people from the hand of what? Philistines. For I have seen my people because their cry has come to me. Could it be that this is Jonathan's hugot? That's why no matter how gigantic you know, the, the troops that we were, they were facing, ang tapang pa rin niya because he understood that God's promise and God's character is greater than any obstacle that life can throw at us. Amen? So Jonathan, in a time of great adversity, he went back to God's word, he went back to God's promises, and he went back to God's track record. Lalo na sa Israel. Diba? If you remember Deuteronomy, Whatever they have experienced from the Lord, the instruction of Moses is to impress them on your children. That's why I believe Jonathan also knew about, you know, the crossing at the Red Sea, you know, the miracles, you know, in, in, in Scripture, daladala niya yun yung heritage nila of how God came through in impossible situations. That's why when you're facing again another impossible situation, what do you do? You go back to God's track record. You go back to God's promises. You go back to God's word because our God is trustworthy. Our faith is not just rooted in a blind kind of faith na sigi-sigi lang, ra-ra-ra lang, but our faith is rooted in the character, in the track record, and in the word of God. So when all the people were focusing on 30,000 Philistines, Jonathan focused on one person. That is God. You only need one person to focus on your life. That's why the author of Hebrews said, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Ang tanong, nasaan ba yung focus mo? Saan ka ba nagfo-focus? Sa problema o sa God mo? I remember this story of Pastor Ian Simpkins, he was talking about, you know, one time in, in his class, their professor asked them, sabi ng professor nila, on your seat, on your classroom, I want you to focus on, on the room and I want you to list down everything that is color green. So, ilista mo yung mga nakikita mong kulay green. So, lista sila. And then, after listing everything that is color green, sabi naman ng professor, okay, you're done with listing down uh, everything that you saw that is color green. Right now, uh, list down everything that you see that is color blue. So, lista sila. And sila nagtataka, anong, anong essence netong nung lesson na to? Kung color blind ba kami o hindi? <laughs> but it's a theology class. And, I, and this was the response of the professor of, you know, Pastor Ian Simpkins. Walang pangalan, so let's just call him the professor, okay? Sabi ng professor, some of you are convinced that God only works in green that you're missing all the ways that he's working in blue. A lot of times when we're just focusing na para si God mag come through, kung 30,000 sila, kailangan 30,000 din kami or 50,000 din kami. And we're missing out some of the ways that God could exceed even our realities and even our expectations. Do you understand? We often believe God only works in a certain way and we've missed so many times He is moving outside of our expert expectations and our limited thinking and, percepti and perception. That's why we have to really focus on God because we know it may not be the way we perceive things, hindi man nag align on the way we want to perceive things, but we know God works even outside of our perceptions and our expectations. Nakuha niyo? 
Yes, yeah, salamat. Nakuha ni RC. English eh. Okay. Continuing. E eh, nakuha ng armor bearer ni Saul. Kaya ang sagot, sabi niya, sabi ng armor bearer, okay, yun ba yung gagawin natin? Do all that is in your heart. Do as you wish. Behold, I am with you, heart and soul. Here's my question to us this morning. When God asks us to do something outside of our expectations, are we willing to obey with all our heart and soul? Just like the armor bearer. Kasi two sides of the story to eh. Yung audacious faith ni Jonathan, this crazy faith. Pero itong armor bearer, very simple lang yung faith niya eh. I just want to obey with all my heart, with all my soul. So those are the lessons that we can learn from these two men. You know, this is my prayer. May we never lose our loyalty to God even in the face of life's greatest challenges. Alam nyo minsan, yung nakita nyo yung nangyari sa story, yung 30,000 Di ba, kalaban nila. Tapos sila 3,000. From 3,000, naging 600 na lang. Ano nangyari dun sa 2-4 na, na soldiers? Parang nawala na. Parang lahat ng ginawa ni Lord sa kanila, nalimutan na nila. Minsan may mga ganong pangyayari sa life natin eh. Kapag everything is going right, okay, I'm gonna be loyal to God. But if everything is not going according to what I want, then limot-limot na lang Lord. Aha. And ganun yung nangyari nun eh. Mahirap talaga pag yung faith natin, it is based on blessings, it is based on breakthroughs, and it is based on what is convenient to us. But my prayer is that we will never lose our loyalty to God, that our, the foundation of our faith is not based on just answered prayers or everything is, seems like going right in our lives, but I pray that our foundation of our faith is just God first and foremost. So 1 Samuel 14 verse 8, Jonathan said, Behold, we will cross over to the men. We will show ourselves to them. Ang tapang talaga ni Jonathan weak, no? Verse 9, If they say, Wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and we will not go up to them. Pero sabi niya, pag ito yung sign, if they say, Come up to us, then ang gagawin natin, we will go up because that is the sign the Lord has given them to us, given them into our hands and this shall be the sign to us. So here's the second point. Our, our, our faith doesn't just overcome fear, but our faith allows us to move into action. So God works through our actions. Our faith should not be passive. Rather, our faith should motivate us to take action, relying on God's guidance and strength. I remember this uh, description of James, no? the half-brother of Jesus. He said, also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is... Dead. Sabi, faith without works is dead. And a lot of times, people are thinking this is about soteriology or salvation. But we have to understand, James wrote this for Christians. He wrote this for the church who were scattered because of the persecution of the Roman Empire. So he was talking to save people here. And he was saying, walang, ano parang, walang kwenta kung sinasabi mong Christian ka kung hindi nakikita sa buhay mo and how you live your lives. Yun yung sinasabi ni James dito. Parang uh, ito yan eh. For example, you're believing God for provisions, pero ikaw nakanganga lang, nagaantay ka na mahulog yung isang milyon mula sa langit? Or bigla nilang may mga perang papasok sa bank account mo? Or biglang mananalo ka nilang sa loto kahit di ka tumataya sa loto? Or kahit tumataya ka sa loto? Parang shortcut na lang. Yung gusto mo, instant lagi. Or maybe, Lord, gusto ko naman ng asawa, Lord. Nagpipray ako ng asawa. Pero are you really, you know, Raising up yourself to be the right person for the right person you are praying for? Do you get what I mean? You know, I mean, I want the right person, I want the right guy, I, I want the right one. Pero ikaw ba kamusta ka? Are you becoming the right person for that right person you're believing God for? Or baka naman gusto mo ibigay ka ni Lord sa taong yun, tapos ikaw, you're not the right person for that person. Kawawa naman yun. Nandamay ka pa ng isang buhay. Ikaw nga mismo, hindi ka pa ready. Hindi pa maayos yung buhay mo. You know, faith without works is dead. Parang ganito yan eh. Very good illustration. I shared this during our In Love and Harmony event. Sino dito, you go to the gym? Or maybe you have a gym membership. Sino dito may gym membership ka? For example, nasa fitness camp, nag-enroll ka. Nag-enroll ka lang. May enrollment ka. Di ko sinabi kung pumupunta ka. Okay, wala. So ito yung second question. May gym membership ka, tapos pumupunta ka sa gym. Yan. Pero iba lang yun. May pumupunta sa gym, nagsiselfie lang. Or kumakain lang doon. Iba yung 
Yung pumupunta sa gym, naniniwala sa gym, may gym membership, pumupunta sa gym at nag exercise di ba? If we go to the gym, or if we believe in the gym, or we have a gym membership, does it change our life? Hindi, di ba? If we go to the gym and watch other people work out, does it change our lives? Hindi din. But what if we have a gym membership, we go to the gym, we exercise in the gym, would it actually have an impact in our life? Same with faith. A lot of us, we, we go here and say, I'm a Christian. Pero when you look at their lives, they're not living out their faith. Some people go here on church, they just watch other people worship, watch other people serve, watch other people give, watch other people live out their purposes, pero sila, wala, spectator lang. Kaya ito sinasabi ni Paul. Faith without works is dead. You have to live out your faith. Faith definitely moves into action. That is an evidence of your faith. It propels you to move into action. Hindi yung nakahiga ka lang, nakatunganga ka lang, nagaantay ng miracle. When we look to Gospels, si Jesus, galit na galit siya sa tamad, galit na galit siya sa mga taong hindi tinutulungan yung sarili nila. Ang tinutulungan ni God, yung mga nagre-respond at tinutulungan yung sarili nila because he understood that is a response to their faith. That's why as, the res- as a response to this crazy kind of faith of Jonathan and his armor bearer, pumunta sila sa garrison of the Philistines. They showed themselves. Sabi niya, ilang kayo dyan? Dalawa kami, kayo ilan? Oh, yabang, di ba? Di ba, matapang talaga. Verse 12, sabi pa, ng mga men, sabi pa, Come up to us and we will show you a thing. Sabi ng mga Philistines. Eh yun yung usapan nila. Pag ito yung sinabi, sugot talaga tayo. So when the, when the Philistines said, Come up to us and we will show you a thing, lalong tumapang si Jonathan. Sabi niya sa armor bearer niya, Come after me. Because the Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. Have you ever said that to your situation? To your impossible situation? Na parang yung mga tao tatawaan ng kanilang, Ano ka ba? Loko-loko ka ba? Ba't ganyan? Pero ikaw, because you know, God promised it. God's word, you know, backs up your situation. You know, faith acts upon the will and the direction of God. That's why I remember what Mary Kay Ash said. There are three types of people in the world. Sino kaya tayo dito? First type of people, those who make things happen. Second kind of people, those who watch things happen. And the third kind of people, those who wonder, What happened? Kasi yung number one, sila Jonathan at armor bearer yan eh. Yung mga sumunod, yun yung sila soul. Tsaka yung mga, yung mga Israelites na naiwan. Then Jonathan, verse 13, climbed up on his hands and feet and his armor bearer after him and they fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer killed them after him. And that first strike with Jonathan and his armor bearer made killed about 20 men with as it were half a furrow's length in an acre of land. And nagulat sila, no? isang strike lang ni Jonathan, 20 agad na matay. Ano kaya ginawa ni Jonathan dito? Kamihami wave? You know? Ano ba siya si Kenshin Himura? Nag, ano, Ryuno Yurameki, ano, no? Na, na technique, no? 20 agad in one strike. No? And, and because of that, there was a great panic in the camp and in the field among all the people, the garrison, even the raiders trembled. Tapos hindi pa natapos doon, no? The earth quaked. And it became a very what? A very great panic. So we can see the pattern. Jonathan triggered the attack. God caused the confusion. The Philistines panicked and attacked each other. And after that, when the, the Philistines were attacking, were panicking and attacking each other because of their confusion, dun na, dun na sumulpot si Saul and his men. They marched into battle not comprehending what was going on. Nakita lang nila, uy, nagkakagulo. Uy, parang may tumatakbo. Tara, sugod tayo. And this is our last point for today. Our faith can be contagious. When we demonstrate our faith through our actions, we can inspire others to do the same, just like what Jonathan and his armor bearer did. Verse 16, And the watchmen of Saul in Gibeah of Benjamin looked, and behold, they saw multitude of dispersing. Nakita nila, Uy, ang dami ng tumatakbo here and there. Verse 17, Paul said to the people who were with him, Bigla siyang nabuhayan. Una, tulala lang siya, nakatitig sa Philistine army. Nung nakita niya, nagtatakbo, Uy, Naging uzi. Anong meron doon? And sabi niya, count and see who has gone from us. And when they had counted, wala na si Jonathan sa armor bearer. So they figured, oh, mukhang nauna na nga. So in verse 20, Saul and all the people who were with him rallied and went into battle. Sumunod kila uh, Jonathan and his armor bearer. And there was a very great confusion when they marched in. Verse 21, now the Hebrews who had been with the Philistines before the time who had gone up with them in the camp, 
they also turn to be with the Israelites. Yung mga Hebrews na kumampi sa Philistines, biglang kumampi. No? Biglang, biglang kumampi na sa Israelites. So noon pa lang pala, marami ng balimbing. Okay? Hindi lang para sa Pilipinas, even uh, sa panahon na yun, ang dami ng balimbing. Then in verse 22, this is, you know, I like this. When all the men of, us, of Israel who had hidden themselves in the hill country of Ephraim heard that the Fili- Philistines were fleeing, bigla silang lumabas sa kanilang pagtatago and they followed hard after them in the battle. You know, while we were just worshiping, you know, yung mga nagtago, yung mga natagong Israelites, I was just reminded of this, what we call intimidating spirit. Alam yung intimidating spirit, yung, 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 yung experience in life na parang may pinagdaanan ka na parang feeling mo hindi mo kaya, na it paralyze you na gusto mo nalang magtago, ayaw mo na magsimba, ayaw mo na magpakita. Yung parang bigla ka na depressed, bigla ka na wala ng gana, bigla na wala ka ng motivation because you were somewhat intimidated. Just like the Israelites who went into hiding. Wala pa nga ginagawa yung mga Philistines eh. Nagpakita lang na 30,000 sila. But it caused them to hide themselves and to just 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 dig a hole, doon na lang magtago at wag na lang lumabas. And a lot of times, yun yung ginagamit ng enemy sa buhay natin eh. Yung intimidation na hindi mo kaya yan. Wala kang kaibigan, nag-iisa ka lang. Hindi mo kaya, you are alone. Walang nagmamahal sa'yo, wala kang katulong. Wala kang ano, wala, w- walang suporta sa'yo, wala kang community. Ganyang-ganyang mga lies sinasabi ng enemy. Kaya ikaw, parang feeling mo, I'm so intimidated in this life, ako lang mag-isa. So, ako na nga lang mag-isa. Just like those people. But when they saw the faith of Jonathan and other people responding and following the, what Jonathan is armor bearer did, bigla silang nabuhayan. Hindi pala ako nag-iisa. Marami pala kami. You know, minsan kailangan natin iparamdam sa enemy na, you know, hindi kami mahina, hindi kami talunan because 2,000 years ago, we're already victorious in our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why, you know, right now, let me just declare, in the name of Jesus, we break any intimidating spirit that is holding our life right now in the name of Jesus. Means that we're, you know, in our time today, ang pinakakalaban na natin talaga, distraction. Intimidating spirit, nang intimidate lang yan, nang aamba lang yan, nagsisigasigaan lang yan eh. Pero alam naman natin, the enemy has been defeated 2,000 years ago. Nagsisigasigaan lang yan. And that's what the enemy does right now. Ang kalaban natin ngayon, comfort and distraction. Because salvation, wala na siyang magagawa doon. Ang problema na lang ng enemy for us to not live out our purposes. Kaya sila, they're not living out their purposes because they're hiding on their holes. nag lang kami. Nagtakbuhan yung iba. Wala na mga friends ko. Sumama na sa Philistines, yung mga Hebrews. Wala na akong kakilala. Ako na lang nag-iisa. Ha? Just look around you right now. You have a community here. And you have a community in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Aren't our God enough in our lives? And He's so faithful and loving that He surrounded us with people that would rally and love us and journey with us in this journey called life. That's why I want to encourage everyone. Alam ko, maraming kailangan ng encouragement today. Be a reason someone returns to faith again. Do not be a reason where someone backslides from their faith. Rather, be a reason someone returns to faith again. I don't know, maybe it takes one invite, one coffee, one dinner, one lunch, one message in Messenger, maybe one like in Facebook. Oh, hindi like niya, pinusuan niya. Akala ko galit siya sa akin, bigla niya pinusuan. Diba? Minsan ganun yung tao, eh. anything lang. Ha, diba? So be a reason someone returns to faith again. And may our faith steer up the faith of the people God put in our lives. Kanina, when we were praying in our prayer huddle, this was the word that blessed Kanina, prayed over and over again. Steer up, steer up, steer up. I believe that's one of the things that the Lord wants to do, not just break the spirit of intimidation, the lies of intimidation, but the Lord wants to steer up the faith. How do we steer up our faith? Hebrews 10, 24, 25, let us consider how to steer up one another 
to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together. That's how we steer up, by meeting together, by encouraging one another. Kaya yung mga nagtatago, paano sila na steer up? Nakita nila naglabasa na, nakita nila nagsitapangan na, nakita nila nilabanan na yung mga Philistines. It steered them up. Kung kaya nila, kaya din namin. Kung ginawa ni Lord sa buhay nila, kaya rin gawin ni Lord sa buhay namin. Kung ito nga eh, binigyan ni Lord ng love life, kaya rin ni Lord gawin yan sa akin. Hindi nga nagtiti ngayon eh. Nakagka-love life ako, ganun, di ba? Kung kaya gawin ni Lord yung kaya rin ni Lord gawin sa akin. Kung kaya bigyan ni Lord ng trabaho yun or ng business, He can do that also to me. Steering up our faith, encouraging one another. That's why we encourage everyone to be part of victory groups. That's our avenue on how we steer up one another. Diba? Eh, 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 wala naman nag-invite sa akin eh. Wala namang lumalapit sa akin eh. Eh, minsan naman pag nilapitan ka, ayaw mo, suplado mo, suplada mo. And also, the phone works both ways. Kung walang nag-detect, hindi ko mag-text. Kung walang tumatawag, ikaw tumawag. Lahat naman tayo busy. Ba't lagi tayong maghahanap ng excuse para manisi? When we could always do something about it. That's why today, starting today, gulatin mo yung VG leader mo, umaten ka ng victory group nyo. Kahit family dinner lang, umaten ka ng family dinner nila. Gulatin mo. Or kung ikaw VG leader na matagal lang hindi nag-victory group, gulatin mo yung members mo, mag-set ka ng victory group. Di ba? Gulatan nilang tayo. Basta ang mahalaga, andyan tayo sa isa't isa to steer up one another. And because of that, the Lord saved Israel that day and the battle passed beyond Bit Avin. Imagine, 30,000 people against two people God gave them the victory. You know, faith always seeks after the glory of God. Yung, vic- yung glory, mapupunta lang kay Lord talaga during that day. Kasi two, two people, two persons against 30,000, wala yung glory kay Jonathan at kay armor bearer niya. Kay A.B. No? Ano ba yung A.B.? Ar- Arvin Bule na ba yun? A.B. <laughs> kay armor bearer niya. Faith always seeks after the glory of God. And we know the end of our story. The end of our story is we will always be victorious and we will always overcome. That's our story as people of God. Kaya, you know, if you're here today and you feel like, parang di pa ako victorious, di pa ako nakaka-overcome. Alam niyo dahilan for that? Because it's not yet the end of your story. Hindi pa tapos si Lord sa'yo. Hindi pa tapos si Lord sa pinagdadaan mo. If it's not okay yet, then it's not the end of your story. As a response, as we end. Our response, let us face our challenges with faith in God, knowing that He can achieve the extraordinary through the ordinary. Uh, can I invite everyone to stand right now? Let's just, as we do the processing, I want us to stand. I want us to stand so mabuhayan yung dugo natin. This is what we're going to do. Let's face our challenges with faith. Ano ba yung challenge mo ngayon? Ano ba yung Philistine in your life? Na parang nai-intimidate ka, nadi-discourage ka, Ano nga ba yun, okay? And it's good, you know, if you have doubts right now, if you have fears, let's face that all together right now. Sama-sama tayo, hindi ka nag-iisa. Tingnan mo, ang dami natin. And I want us to understand this also. The opposite of faith isn't fear. It isn't worry or isn't or, or doubt. You know what the opposite of faith is? Control. Gusto natin lagi we are in control. Pag hindi tayo in control, doon tayo natatakot. Doon tayo nag-worry, doon tayo in doubt. Mabait pa rin ba si Lord? Mahal pa rin ba ako ni Lord? Kasi wala kang control. Kaway-kaway sa mga control freak dito. Sa mga OC, gusto lagi in control. Yun yung problema ng faith. Yung control. Pero alam naman natin kung sino talaga in control. Kung alam mo kung sino in control, you can face your fear, you can face your worries, you can face your doubts. Because fear, worry, or doubt are not an enemy of faith. But if it's unexpressed, it may be an enemy of faith. But you know, yung fear, yung worry, yung doubt, it could be, you know, a fuel for us to grow deeper in our faith. If it is dealt in the right way. That's why today we will deal with our fear, worry, and doubt in the right way. We will all give it to God. Kunwari, ito yung fear mo, ito yung worry, ito yung doubt mo. Sige, ilabas mo. Tapos, itapat mo ngayon kay God. Tapos makikita mo, oh grabe, ang laki ng God ko. Ang lead lang pala, ang puting lang pala to sa leon na God ko. The Lion of Judah. 
I remember what Pastor Timothy Keller said, a faith without some doubts is like a human body without any antibodies in it. People who literally go through life too busy or indifferent to ask hard questions about why they believe as they do will find themselves defenseless against either the experience of tragedy or the probing questions of a smart skeptic. A person's faith can collapse almost overnight if she has failed over the years to listen patiently to her own doubts, which should only be discarded after long reflection. That's why today we will reflect on what you know, we're going through right now. rightly and we deal that before God and with His people. You know, if we can trust God with our eternity. Pinag-usapan natin yan, di ba? Last preaching natin ng set apart, it's about heaven. If we can trust God with, the, with our eternity, we can also trust Him with our present. Di ba? Kung tayo, di ba, looking forward tayo sa heaven, oh, in heaven, oh, ang saya sa heaven, walang brand. Hindi mawawala ng wifi. Trust God with our eternity, we can also trust Him with our present. You know, it's easy to give God our future because we don't have it. It's not ours to give. All we really have right now is our present. And this is what we should learn to surrender to God wholeheartedly. Just like the armor bearer. All my heart, all my soul, I surrender it to you. Slip it all up to God right now. You know, maybe one reason we don't see more transformation and breakthroughs in our lives is because we see the gospel more as a ticket to a destination. Somewhere in the future, na victorious lang ako pag namatay na ako. Rather, we have to see that the kingdom of God is fully at work and fully powerful even now. Do you believe God is powerful? Do you believe God is powerful? We have to believe He is powerful even now. So let us start giving our present situation to God over and over again. And let's witness how our hearts and situations begin to change. Let's step out in courage and take action, knowing that our faith can inspire and empower others, creating a world transformed by the power of God's love. I know, medyo umaba tayo for this Sunday. Alam niyo naman pag ako mag-preach, automatic na yun. But I want us to worship God again. I want us to worship God again with all our fears, with all our doubts and our worries. We're going to give it to God. We're going to declare His promises. We're going to declare His name. You know the song that we sang a while ago, In Your Name? Actually, that's a promise of God. With God, nothing is impossible. And this is one promise I'd like to leave to you as we worship the Lord. Jesus said, in this world, we will have tribulation. But take heart. Take heart. Jesus has already overcome the world with us. Remember that promise. Jesus has already overcome the world for each and every one of us. Ano pa dapat nating itkatakot? Ano pang rason why we go into hiding? Let's live our life as overcomers, overcomers and victorious because our God has overcome for us. God, we worship you. We will declare your greatness and the immensity of your love in this time of worship. We lift you up in Jesus' name.
just have the right idea of who really God is in your life, just like Jonathan. You know, just put yourself in His shoes if you have, you know, an understanding that God is in control. You know, God's promises. You know, malamang ito yung sinasabi ni Jonathan sa isip niya. 30,000 Philistines? Yun lang? Yun lang? Tagtagan niyo ba? Bring it on! Because when you compare those 30,000 Philistines in comparison to how great, how awesome, how powerful our God is, walang wala yun. And right now, bring out your fears, bring out your worries, bring out your situation right now in the throne of God. And in, in compare it to how powerful your God is. And you will say to your situation, walang wala to. Do not be intimidated because the Spirit of God is upon us and we are overcomers. We are more than victorious in all of our situations. So God, we thank you for you've given us not a spirit of fear and timidity, but you've given your church a spirit of power, a spirit of love, even a spirit of self-control, even a sound mind you're giving us to us right now. So God, thank you so much. You have built up the faith of your church. And I pray God as you build up our, our faith, let it be contagious, Lord God, to all the people in our lives. Whether they are part of the church, whether they're part of our victory group, whether they're part of our family, or hindi pa kristyano yan, let Lord our faith will just be contagious towards those people. And they themselves will also know and witness how good, how powerful, how awesome you are. So thank you, God. I, I believe you have restored a lot of things right now. You have healed a lot of us right now. For some of us, you've broken depression. You've broken anxieties right now. And I believe you've given us a new courage, a new perspective. Even yung, yung, yung glamouring for control over our lives. That's why you keep on being disappointed and disappointed every day. You're beginning to give all the control now to God. Lord, you, as we end, we give you the driving seat of our lives. Jesus, take the will, as the popular song said. Lord Jesus, take the will over our lives and we're excited where you're going to bring us because we know it will be one very great adventure that we have with you. So God, maraming maraming salamat po. Continue to build up the faith of your people this week and may our lives continue to worship you and give glory to your name. Lord, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Church, you are